Hi, this is Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Several weeks ago, I showed you the new Power Bridge Stay Alive from Nick's Trains. And since then, something has come up that I wanted to share with you with respect to the use of those Power Bridge Stay Alive's. So stick around for the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, so the Power Bridge Stay Alive's are a nice size that can be paired with Loke Sound and other ESU decoders. They should work with lens decoders and they should work with just about any um, decoder that requires a three wire connection for their stay alive. So these have a black, a red, and a white wire. And the reason for that, it allows the decoder to turn off the stay alive during programming cycles so that you don't have any conflicts. So it's a neat trick that uh, exists in some decoders, but not in others. And as a result, you have a three wire stay alive. And as far as I know, all of the US made uh, decoders use the two wire stay alive. And it's primarily the lens, the DCC concepts, and the ESU uh, decoders that use the three wire stay alive. So Nick Santo, the owner of Nick's Trains, was wondering if there was any way that you could configure these three-wire stay-alives to work with decoders that normally use a two-wire one. And so he went back to the designer of these. The fellow that designed these told him that, yes, all you need to do is connect the red and the white wires together, connect those to the blue wire, connect the black wire to the ground connection, and you're ready to go. It should work fine. So Nick tested it and it seemed to work for him. So I decided I'd give it a try too and show you whether it works or not. So come on in and take a close look down here at what I have on the workbench to show you because I think you're going to be interested. So the question was, can you use a three wire stay alive with a decoder that requires a two wire stay alive. So I got this Soundtrax Economy decoder that I've had uh, sitting in here for a while and hooked it up to my uh, ESU decoder tester right here. And that is connected to a Digitrax Zephyr. As Nick was instructed, I took the red and the white wire, spun them together and soldered the wires together and I put a little bit of solder on the black wire to keep those wires from fraying. And I did that to both of the three wire power bridges that I showed you a few weeks ago. And I also had an original um, ESU three wire stay alive to give a test with. So got it wired up. You can see I've got the red and white wire connected to the blue wire here on the uh, on the decoder and so that red is positive the blue wire is positive and then the black wire coming out of the power bridge is connected to this green and yellow wire and one thing you'll find out if you look at a lot of these stay alive everybody seems to use their own combination specifically if you look at um, I've got a little chart here and basically the folks at uh, DCC Concepts for the positive wire, they use a blue wire. For ESU uses a red wire, and Lens uses a blue wire. With the DCC Concepts, they use a white wire. ESU uses white, Lens uses pink. And finally, for the ground wire, the uh, black wire is uh, the DCC Concepts. ESU uses black. Lens uses brown. So various companies use different colors for these, even though the NMRA standard is uh, to use blue for the positive and black and white for the ground. At this point, I have the Power Bridge Stay Alive connected to the Economy Decoder. So let me make a connection here and we'll fire this up and see what it sounds like.
I haven't adjusted the, the uh, sound volumes yet because it's right out of the package and I wanted to do this test. So it's pretty loud, but it does work. Okay, I'm letting it run for just a minute so that we get a good charge on our capacitor here on the Stay Alive. So in a second, after it's charged up a little bit, I will go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the connection right here. I've got two alligator clips uh, connecting the wire together here. And I'm just going to pull that apart to simulate a section of dirty track or going over a dead frog or just finding a piece of track that has no electrical connection. So let's see what it sounds like. It's been running for a few seconds now. So you can see it ran for a couple of seconds even after power was removed. So that was very, very encouraging for me. So I went ahead and did some more. So let's take a look and a listen. I'm going to connect up one of the uh, ESU Stay Alive's. So I'm going to disconnect the power bridge and we'll connect the ESU in its place. And let's give it a test. Okay, so here's our red, white, and that goes to the blue. Like so. Give that a good twirl. Make sure those wires are connected. And then I'm going to clip it just to make sure. Because these things do tend to come loose if you're not careful. Okay, and then finally the black and the green yellow wires on the Soundtracks decoder. Okay, there we go. Now I'll go ahead and we'll make that connection again. And I'm going to run, let it run for just a few seconds to charge up. Okay, let's disconnect it again and see what happens. So it ran for what, about a second or so? Uh, even after, after the power was removed, it did run for about a second. So that's the power bridge. And, oh no, that's the original, uh, the, that's the original ESU uh, Stay Alive. And let's see, we've got still one more of these little guys. This is the other power bridge right here, so we'll give that one a test too. Okay, there they're connected together. Get it started up and charging. Okay, let's disconnect it and see what happens. So, about a second or so with a minimal charge because I didn't leave it charging all that long. So we've tested the Power Bridge 1, the Power Bridge 2, and the original uh, Loke Sound ESU Stay Alive. So those are three of the readily available, commonly available, uh, three wire Stay Alive's. So you can use those with decoders that require a two-wire stay alive. Now, I also tried these tests with uh, a few of the DCC Concepts three-wire stay alive. Unfortunately, none of these worked, and I'm not exactly sure why. They did warm up, and uh, they did appear to have a charge, but I don't know, maybe I just didn't leave them on long enough. At any rate, I will, as I get time over the next week or so, try these again and see, because I have about a dozen or so of these that I would like to be able to use with my, uh, with my decoders. I don't have that many low sound decoders to pair them with. But I do have several of these three-wire stay-alives that I now know that I can use with my Soundtracks decoders, 
and my TCS decoders and see how they work. Well, I have a last minute update on this video. Um, overnight, I got an email back from the folks at DCC Concepts, and they say that their Stay Alives do have a slightly different functionality from that of the ESU Log Sound Type 3 wire Stay Alives, and also a little different from Nick's Train's design. So that could account for why their Stay Alives do not respond to this little trick for using the three-wire stay alive with a two-wire decoder. So that's something that I wanted to pass on to you just here at the end of the video because I did hear back from them so fast. So it appears that uh, this will work with the three-wire stay alive from Nick's trains and also at least with some of the uh, Loke Sound ESU stay alive that I tested it with. So just be aware of that when you're checking out some of these other three-wire stay alive designs they may or may not work with this trick. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. So now you know that if you have any of these three wire stay alives uh, tucked away in your electronics box, uh, just waiting for a uh, low sound decoder to go with them, you should be able to pair them with any of the decoders that normally use a two wire stay alive device. Because now you know the secret. Connect that red and the white wire together Connect that to the blue wire, connect the black wire to your ground connection, and you're ready to go. That's all there is to it. In the meantime, I am now working on a video on constructing the cornerstone kits that I will be using on the modules. So I'm working on those, I've got some painting done, and then we'll start putting them together. So sometime in the next week or so, you can expect to see another video on that. So that's it. Have a great week and a great weekend, and I'll see you here again next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.